Hey folks, it's been about a week since I checked in, so uh, let me adjust this so you can see my ugly face, and let me just catch up. I've got music playing in the background. Um, I'm hoping that I don't get bothered by the copyright police. I'm thinking this is fairly obscure, although that has not deterred them in the past. I'll talk about what it is in a second. You know, um, when I don't make videos for a while, I, I, I do tend to get a, a message now and then from a Cosmic Drifter. He'll um, like send me a forward to a video or even just a message, you know, because he's missing the videos, you know. No problem, but uh, interestingly, this week I've seen in my uh, feed where and comment section where more folks appear to be going back and watching older videos, um, jonesing for a new one from me. Well, the good thing about it to me is that people are going back and looking at some of the old videos because, as I have said recently, um, they get a lot of requests. People ask, well, have you heard of, have you heard of, have you heard of, bet you haven't heard of, bet you haven't heard of, which is a fun thing to do, and it's a, a human thing to do, you know. But as I said, quite often, you know, go back and you'll find that I have talked about that music or know a little bit about it. Someone mentioned something recently where it was new to me. Um, I didn't have the time to go look into it, but I do, you know, I haven't heard of everything, you know, obviously. Um, since my last video, I have some, received some music, but I've been in a phase where, um, and I go through this, I've been in a phase where I really am not playing a lot of records. Uh, I gotta get my teeth cleaned. Um, but some, some stuff was sent to me. And I've, um, I've checked it out, but I haven't gotten into it deeply. But I'll go ahead and tell you, give, give you a review. Because, again, that's what I... And I haven't listened to everything that was sent to me. Um, so, so um, a, a fellow by the name of Fred Church got a hold of me and asked if I would be interested in hearing um, his project called Celebrity Side Boob. I said, sure. So it came with a note, vinyl, and two CDs. Fred, it turns out, uh, let me shout out, if you still watch, Adam, Nic Nickel Adam Nichols, shout out to you. Because when I went to um, thank uh, Fred through Facebook, which is the way to find people, uh, I saw that he was already friends with Adam and a few other folks. And Adam, your new music on Bandcamp is good. That soundtracky stuff, that's good stuff. It is. Um, but um, Fred is, Fred's work reminds me of Negative Land. That's a compliment. That's the first way to put it into context. What this is, is it, it is, um, presented as a comp not a compilation but supposedly several different artists um, contributing to this project something to do with celebrity but when you listen to it it sounds um, uniform uh, it, it uses a lot of sampling a lot of dialogue from different things from television radio who knows what else it really sounds um, to me like if all these people, different people are involved, uh, it's really pretty seamless. It sounds like the work of Fred Church, who also goes by the name of Kumquat. He sent me two Kumquat CDs. I've only listened to part of one. I haven't even opened this other one. Um, I, I like the work. I like... 
I bring up negative land because this listening to this prompted me to actually go and look up uh, negative land on video because one of their um, one of their members died not that long ago and I wanted to see if I could find more information about the band and did find a, a, a cool documentary on um, sound people that work with sound uh, sound warriors possibly is the name of it but um, this was enjoyable um, I didn't listen real close to when you use when people use um, a lot of sound bites of conversation and talk generally speaking there's a reason for it and a contextualization that they're going for I didn't pay much attention to it on this um, on the listen I just like the way everything worked together um, it may reveal more with a deeper listen I also played some of this particular kumquat single um, let's see what's the name of this similar to sugar pill and uh, I just enjoyed I just enjoyed it but um, again I can't give a real deep review of it because it was mainly in passing as you know that I wanted to just check it out haven't even opened this yet but I understand by going to discogs and reading also on his website that this particular disc he's using the voice of Barack Obama sampled um, so I'll get to that eventually. It does um, point to something I did say um, in a couple of videos ago, which is, you know, I do, I do appreciate everyone sends me. The records are a visceral experience. And so dropping the needle is what I like to do. And so when I get records, I'd be dropping the needle. Com uh, music is important, but compact disc, it is a little different for me. And, you know, sometimes it takes a while. With that said, James Drummond, who lives in England and is a, 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 I consider him a friend even though we haven't met, but our exchanges are very friendly. And he just sent me a CD that he plays on, he played it for the first time yesterday. Philip King, Flowers and Ledges. This just came out in 2015. Uh, Jim plays viola. He's with the BBC Orchestra. I don't know if the BBC has more than one orchestra, but he play, I know he plays with the BBC Orchestra. And um, the other person that I noticed in the... Um, well, he told me about this too, is that the keyboardist of Porcupine Tree, Richard Barbieri, who recently became a friend on Facebook, and we've actually chatted a couple times already on Facebook, had some conversations really means a lot to me. His wife, Suzanne Barbieri, is, uh, is sings on this. Now, when I got this and saw the cover, I wasn't sure what to expect. I like that. I like that graphic. With Suzanne Barbieri's involvement, my hope was that it would be something kind of atmospheric, maybe in the region of No Man, the music of No Man, if you're familiar with them. But this is soul, and um, the focus is on the guy's voice. Uh, he's a soul singer, you know, and um, the music is good on this. Um, uh, I think there will be some people who will dig this, the, the songs themselves. The guy is really into emoting and showing that he can sing with an old kind of um, black gospel flavor. Um, my first my first spin of this I got to a point where it's like I couldn't get past the vocals because it's it didn't interest me but I was listening all the time to the music and this is well made and this fellow apparently has his own background and his own audience so check out Philip Kane Jim Drummond from the VC plays on this viola and thanks for the music A bit of a mix of things here because um, you know that's how I do but I haven't even really wanted to get on here and talk about anything just because things just continue to be you know I try to you know 
when I decided to just keep a local focus, my stress level and everything goes down and the days are good. But you look at the news and you reconnect with the world and what the media wants you to be focused on and it's just madness. You know, the complete freak out over Orlando, uh, the Brexit, which I have no opinion of. I'm not, I don't live in the, in Britain or the EU, but, um, it's just madness. And so, um, I've just really been kind of on the down low when it comes to, uh, social media to a degree. I do have some other records that I can show you that are newer to the collection. Here's one where I went ahead and used part of my earnings from my last show to get because it was not cheap, but this is something I've been, I want, I've been wanting. As you know, um, I'm interested in progressive rock. I'm interested in the history of psychedelic music, and I'm just interested in obscure records, the collectible ones, and uh, for a long time, I just really wanted to know, well, why? Why is this so collectible? Why? And, uh, and would want to own them if possible. One of those really collectible records from Austria for years has been this album called Paternoster, which I burned a CD years ago because I just wanted to hear it. But it's one of those that if you ever saw it for sale, it will be in the thousands of dollars. It was finally reissued in a limited edition again. Apparently there's been a reissue years ago um, by Orwassel. I never saw it. I never saw one. So when I found out about the now again um, reissue through Almost Music and they got one in, even though it was pricey, I really wanted this. And um, so I picked it up, you know, and um, it's one of those, it's one of those purchases that, um, you know, may indeed affect my bill paying for a while, you know, it's probably done now, but you know what I'm saying? This wasn't cheap. Really wanted this album. Um, it comes with a big booklet inside that explains the whole story behind this record and how it was a one-off, um, which a music exec just happened to hear them in a club thought they'd be good for the soundtrack of something, which led to them, CBS Austria, um, letting them record one album, which disappeared almost immediately. Um, supposedly all copy, most copies got destroyed, which also increases its value. Now, the thing I want to say is when I first got this burn, I thought it was really pretty awful the way that it starts, okay? It gets better after you get past the first vocals. But I come to find out that this was from the wrong speed. And so this is at the right speed. And they don't sound like Soft Machine or Pink Floyd, but those are two references that they point out. And you hear it in them, in here. A lot of organ and spacey, um, like Pink Floyd and Soft Machine, yeah. Um, they, the story talks about how they had trouble finding a drummer. And so the drumming is nothing to write home about. It gets the job done. But knowing the story now, it explains why the drums aren't quite up to snuff. But this is well, If I recommend this. I think this is really, really neat. It's pretty good. They really get into it. And that's the other thing that makes it... Um, cool is that the singing and the atmosphere is heavy. It's heavy. You know, something's going down. And that I also like about this. So Paternoster, um, I recommend this. And you can hear, like anything, you can hear everything online so you can find out what it sounds like without spending a penny. Um, the music I was playing, or the sound work that I was playing, I picked this up at a show last night, okay? So let me talk about that. So I caught wind um, about a week and a half ago that the ex Avant Guard Experimental, well, just the um, guitarist, Bill Nace, who is currently working with Kim Gordon in a project called Body Head, he plays with a lot of people. But I'd seen him here maybe about seven, eight years ago. 
and uh, solo guitar. He lays it on his lap and uses devices and stuff and does some very interesting things. So when I heard that he was coming again, I had to, you know, I wasn't going to miss it because he, I really liked what he did last time. He came with a fellow by the name of Jake Lewinsky. I'll show that first because I went ahead and bought one of each of their um, vinyls. Vinyl, of their vinyl. And this is Jake Mag Maginski with an album called Vandals. He did uh, duets with Bill last night um, at the show. And what he did was he played an Akai sampler and Bill played the laptop guitar. And it was wonderful. It was low key. It wasn't like real heavy noise, noise, noise. It was more like, it was very much, reminded me a lot of early Ashra Temple um, where they create this cavern of sound and you enter into it. It was wonderful. And so as a result, I s said, yeah, I'll get his album. You heard it in the background and I talked to him a little bit after the show as well. Um, he is a uh, sound explorer and has a method to what he's up to. And he said what he's been interested in lately, and he worked with it in the show, is semitones and the, the rhythms that are created by um, um, tones that are just, just off of each other and, and cause this oscillation wonderful stuff you know and really it's like it opens stuff you know stuff that's kind of like it opens these channels so the one listen which you heard that's the first time i dropped the needle on it is like i like this you know uh manipula interesting manipulation and exploration of of sound um and i bought an album by bill nace this is an album he made with uh, another artist by the name of aaron dillaway it's called the Band EP. Just got to play a little bit of this. That's the cover, the front of Bill's amp that he uses, and, and yeah, he's, he keeps the PV like that. It's pretty cool. Um, once again, uh, my initial impression is real good. I mean, I really like it. Well, how about that? There's a typewritten poem in here. I'll have to read it. Um, thought it was an info sheet, but it's a poem. Bill makes the guitar do things that would never, you would never suspect that it's a guitar if you didn't see him playing. And I can tell that he spends a lot of time doing this. This is what he's into, exploring sound. And as a result, he's been some places that he can take you as a listener that we haven't been before. You know, you can get some objects and and make noise, you know, and that's fun. And anyone can do it. And sometimes, just like a monkey with a typewriter, something beautiful can happen. But people who spend time exploring sound and finding things can open up doors sonically, which I'm interested in because they're doing things as a result of their exploration. They're finding out ways of doing things that they wouldn't have been able to do had they not been on this journey. And I like them sharing it with us through the records. So that's what I have to say about Bill Nace and Jake Legin, Le, whatever his name was. It was a good show last night. Not a lot of people, but it was good. And the local noise acts were good too. Big Slur and Screaming, screaming Plastic. Their sets were good as well. Now, besides that music, recently I, I, I mentioned this in the last video that I've had to move my work to a warehouse um, with my part-time job. And um, there's some used records there, nothing much, you know, So, but I, I took some, you know. One that I took um, that's not in too bad of a shape, mainly to have it, just, you know, I've never owned a copy of Aftermath by the Rolling Stones. This is a mono U.S. copy. It's played 
but it's actually considering what you usually find these what kind of shape these are in this is in really good shape so I was and um, I play uh, a lot of Rolling Stones now in this band it's called Scudder that I play and we play originals but we also play a lot of covers it's a kind of a bar band that has been revived I mentioned that along with that I haven't talked about having any new releases of my own because I don't really but I have one coming out with Scudder we've been in the studio uh, recording good versions of the leaders um, originals when I get done with this video I'm actually going to the studio to listen to the master you know the the, the, the final master before it gets sent to be um, manufactured so that'll be a new record that I'm on coming out I don't think it'll be on vinyl just CD but I think some of you people will like it actually all right but um we play painted black which is on here which is nice to have and I see it hold on I see a spider okay another record that was there that's like these are, are records that these are the real records that I guess in many ways you would say non music heads you'll find in non music heads homes Jimi Hendrix smash hits I'm, of course you'll find this in music heads homes too but you know what I'm saying people that are not really heavily into music you know they want to they want the hits they want the, the familiar stuff so this is a record of his I never owned and wouldn't would never buy because it smash hits but I was able to get it for free here's another one that you know you just it's like it's it's one of those albums that in many ways is dead and gone but it had significance to me in high school I went to an all-boys Catholic high school and they really liked Cat Stevens and this was used a lot in English class and I forget what other class T for the Tillerman but they'd have us you know dissect the lyrics and what do you think this means and you know what's the what's is there a spirituality to this and there most definitely is you know and um as a young teen this album i ended up loving it you know where do the children play and on the road to find out some great songs on here so you grab a copy of that for free got heavy horses this is another one by jethro toll i had never owned and compared to the one i had showed you before um, War Child, this one I like immediately. War Child, people have suggested, you know, go back to it. You'll probably appreciate it more. I probably will. But this one I liked right away. A couple other things that I got that I was happy about. I have a copy of this already, but I got another one because it's in, in, it's really in very good shape. Fleetwood Mac's Kiln House. Back when Jeremy Spencer was still in the band, I believe. Yep. Yep, I've always liked this cover too. So, we, like I said, even though I already have a copy, couldn't leave it. These records are so old that you know they're just you know, it's like when I was a child and you saw the antiques from way before people before. That's what this stuff is for a lot of people. It has no relevance, and yet I, this is the music of my life and my childhood. And so, I see this stuff and I want to get it. These were not in good shape, but I was just glad to be able to add them to my collection. 12-inch singles, Michael Jackson's Bad. And in my opinion, this this arrangement, this sound has really dated poorly. Uh, I put this on and it's like, ooh, yuck. I never really liked the song Bad, to be honest with you. But this sounds cheesy to me. It has not aged well. And then I was able to get Thriller, a 12 inch of Thriller, which has fared better, okay? The sound of the 80s is all over this. But this was, to me, something inspiring was going on when this record was being made, and it just holds up. Whereas they tried to follow it up on this one, and it's like it's not as cool. It's my ears, this is my opinion. And that's what I will show now because we're already past 20 minutes. Um, I uh, don't know what to think about all the events of the world. The main, I had my friend.
friend Paul from the band RAF was over Friday night. We were supposed to rehearse, and then we couldn't because the drummer had some stuff come up with his kids. So we hung out and watched the Rush documentary. He's a huge Rush fan. I love Rush. Respect him way more now than I ever did. And we had a talk, and we talk about a lot of stuff. Paul's a, a real brainy guy. And compared notes about the um, world, he had to get off of social media. It was literally stressing him out. All the... Um, the negativity and the madness. You know, it's just a shame that so many people seem to be unaware of the toxic effect of mass negative output, especially when it's just people just spouting off. And the main thing going on is how divided and untogether everyone is. Everyone has an opinion and everyone's opinion is different. And, and mostly what people are doing is not sharing coming at each other and that's what I wanted to say about um, just in general um, my c comment about the world which is it appears to me that the underlying thing going on with all the pol political insanity worldwide is that this global new world order this global economy, which was supposed to be so cool, is an utter failure. Not because the idea of a global economy, economy was bad, but because everyone is cheating. And I'm, I'm saying that generally. But I think that so many people have not honored and done what they say they're doing with the money and the power that it's just collapsed. And we're, we're still running, we're running on empty, this is just my opinion, this is the way it looks to me when I try to overview it, that, you know, economic structures are seemingly up and running, but we're just making it. We're, we're, we're able to eat, drive our cars, still work, but the Brexit and the madness of the U.S. policy politics just shows that Everyone's been talking game, but no one's been taking care of business. And so it's all collapsing. It's all falling apart. And I really think a big reason why it's all falling apart is because people who have said they're doing things haven't been doing them. They've just been taking advantage of the situation and getting personal wealth and personal gain and being short-sighted and not looking at, well, if I say I'm going to do this, but I actually do this, and that takes a block out of the foundation of what I said I was going to do. Well, eventually what I said I was going to do is going to fall. But because it appears to me that people who are in positions of gaining are so short-sighted about them and what they're going to get, they just do it, not thinking about the long term. And so as a result, you know, we're living in a world that is um, the structure of our societies are just... Um, in splinters and we're coping with it that's what it looks like to me you know i don't know that and i kept saying that to paul it's like this see this is the one way that i'm able to talk to people without getting all riled up i know that i'm just sharing my opinion i don't know i don't know if this is what it is but the thing that also saves me that i don't hear from other people is that they don't know either but no one seems to know that. They just, well, this is what I think, and this is the way it is. And if you don't like it, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurt you or unfriend you. You know, it just seems so short-sighted and emotionally charged. You know, it's like, more, you know, more people can just get a sense of perspective, you know. Um, it does appear to me that someone or something is very happy to have us continually further divided from one another and and the ramping up of just general chaos is serving someone's purpose I don't know that but it seems that way and I say it because it, one of the reasons I say it is because when I turn on the news the message just feeds the flame of the chaos as opposed to offering any sort of balm or real message that says, 
okay we can turn this around okay we can come together I ain't seeing that not on a corporate media level I see groups of individuals and people trying to pull it together but no help from the man they're just getting paid with the short side on the getting paid and just I don't know that's what it looks like to me so but remember what I just said I don't know so if you don't agree with me don't get shook I don't know but neither do you